Hey everybody, welcome back in to GoBlueRaiders.tv. Welcome into the drill. And we're in the Ascend Federal Credit Union studio. Director of Athletics Chris Massaro is back with us. As promised last week, we talked about uh, a lot of things, a few things last week uh, going into the weekend. You were just heading off to uh, to Destin for fun right. frolic and the Sun Belt yeah. meetings, and now you're back. So, I am. Uh, so give us the, uh, the Reader's Digest uh, report of what went on at the Sun Belt meetings. You know, it was a, kind of a neat meeting, Chip, that I, I was a little worried going down because we had Florida International and North Texas were going to be in the meetings and how everyone would react to those. And then we had our new members with uh, Georgia State and Texas Arlington and Texas State in the meetings. So it was just going to be kind of this, mm-hmm. this transitional stuff. And it was really great that uh, the ADs, I, I don't know if we've ever had a better meeting because – there were a lot of different perspectives at the table from different conferences, and and I learned a lot, and I came out of there feeling much better about the leadership that, at Texas State and UT Arlington and Georgia State is terrific. I'm excited. I, I think that uh, we had some really good meetings, and Commissioner Benson uh, was, was very good with us, and so I think to an AD, we all came out of there feeling much better about things, and, and FIU and North Texas just they sat there and gave their perspectives, and it was it was great. They handled everything with class, and and it, uh, they were able to to kind of give us a different perspective too. So I thought it really blended well. I think that worked. That's that's good that they were that they even though on their way to yeah. a different destination, that they were still very active participants, yeah. and uh, not the quote unquote lame duck. Yeah, and that they've got one more year to compete, mm-hmm. and both of them recognized what the Sunbelt Conference has done for their programs. And and so I, I thought that was very good that Pete Garcia, the athletic director at FIU, and Rick Villarreal, I thought, really handled it uh, exceedingly well because I'd never been in that situation before, and, and I, I don't think it could have been – it could have come out any better than it did. And I think a lot of it's due to those two guys and, and how they handled it and their perspective on things. Let's take those two people just for a second, those two schools, FIU and North Texas. They move on to Conference USA in a year. Uh, when they go there, uh, you know, I think uh, they have an opportunity to – to make everybody in the Sun Belt look really, really good. Well, I, I, obviously they're good programs, yeah. and so I, I think that, and I'm, I'll be their biggest cheerleader. That I hope they go in and do well. Uh, I think that you know, particularly early on, they'll have a little bit of the Sun Belt brand with them. So I think that that will help us if they go in and do well. And and also, there's a lot of personal relationships there. I've worked with with the, the athletic directors for a number of years, and and know the coaches and the people at each at each school, and so there's a lot of respect there. And so I hope that they go in and do well, and uh, you know that uh, I just I think it'll be great. And and it, uh, it's there's some wonderful people there, and and I'm confident that they've got a really good program that both of them and, and they're going to do well. Yeah, and uh, as they leave, we mentioned the three new members that come in, and just uh, you talked about them in general, but just a few thoughts about. Yeah. about Georgia State, Texas State, and UT Arlington. Well, and it's kind of neat when you're sitting in a meeting and there's Bill Curry, <laughs> I, I mean, who's who's coached and played in Super Bowls, and he's uh, been at all kinds of levels of college athletics, been on ESPN, and one of the most respected people in the history of college football, quite honestly. And, and so that was pretty neat to see him from Georgia State. And, and then Texas State with their – their leadership, and I was really impressed with Larry Tice. Did not really know him before the the, the meeting. He's their athletic director, and and uh, UT Arlington, and just uh, listening to Jim Baker, their athletic director, describing their new basketball arena that they opened up, and and they had a really good basketball team last year. They were like a 100 RPI, and Georgia State was uh, RPI was in the kind of like in the 130 range, and so. I think that this additions will really, I mean, and this has been a little bit overlooked, will really help our men's basketball conference. Yeah, Georgia State is uh, is an interesting uh, addition. They're going to be a whole lot like some of the other urban-based universities we have already in the league. Texas State, to me, that's that's a college town. It's it a very broad-based, very similar to a lot of other schools in this league. You know, and they may come in with the best facilities in the league, uh, from what I've been told. So. 
I, I think it'll be that they're going to come in and they're going to be able to compete too, yeah. and as will Georgia State. So I, I feel very good about those two additions. Uh, that uh, and I think the Sun Belt at the end said, you know, we've got 12 members, 10 football playing schools. Let's just put a hold on this, evaluate what we have. We're not gonna, we're not in any kind of expansion mode, and and I think that's good. That uh, I, I'm looking forward to this year with our old members, FIU and North Texas. But I'm also excited about uh, our our new membership, and I was I, I can't stress it enough to our fans just what good leadership they have, and, and I think that uh, they'll build their programs very quickly. And for fans who like to travel, there's going to be some pretty good trips out of this deal, No too. question, <laughs> no question, and easy trips. I yeah. mean, both of them, uh, both of them are, uh, Texas schools are easy flights, and we all like to go to Atlanta, so uh, mm -hmm. it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, you mentioned the Sun Belt is kind of in a, in a holding pattern at this point, but uh, the landscape across the country for the has been uh, the last month and month and a half has been very active. Uh, at, as you come out of the Sun Belt meetings, what is the perception of all the administrators, CEOs, ADs, uh, of, of how the national picture is going to shake out, especially for the rest of the summer? Yeah, and that was a it wasn't really part of the formal discussions, but it was a lot of informal discussions. And, and I think, again, it's one of these summers where nobody really knows what direction it's going to take. There's a lot of rumbling. Every time you, you go on the Internet, you, you pick up a different rumor. So we'd be a little foolish to think that uh, this thing's over. Uh, there are some big dates to remember. And I think in late June, the, the BCS is meeting in Chicago to kind of hammer out the, the, the kind of the details of what the BCS championship will look like. And I think then things will kind of develop off of it. And you're already seeing some of it, I, I think, as some of these conferences are posturing towards that. So I, I think that we'll know more every week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just going to be an interesting summer, and I think that there's going to be a lot happening nationally in terms of realignment. When we uh, last talked uh, a week or so ago, uh, that we, we teased a, a su the Sunday newspaper article, and we had over 3,000 views, asked people to provide us with some feedback, and they have done that. And uh, to kind of give, give you some of that feedback, let it bounce around here, and you give your reactions uh, to it. Uh, one of them was about uh, the likelihood of Middle Tennessee moving to anywhere. Uh, do, you, do you see that as something that is still in flux or or uh, is middle in a holding pattern as well as uh, like the Sun Belt is well, at this point? I, you know, and I've always said, Chip, that, you know, there's actors and reactors in this realignment process and and it sort of comes and goes. And I, I think at this point in time, we're, we're in the reactive phase uh, that, uh, that, that, that there's uh, we're just kind of gauging what the national landscape is. We're very happy in the Sun Belt Conference that I, I think that I've said all along that the minute you start talking about other conferences in detail, that, that particularly if, the, if, you, if I give the impression that's a perceived step up, then what that does is diminish the accomplishments of our student athletes from all what they've done for 10 years. Uh, or so that we've been in the Sun Belt. So I don't want to diminish anyone's accomplishments, but I, I think that we need to always keep our eye out there. Um, I, I mean, I think every school in the country is doing that, mm -hmm. and uh, just to see where this thing's going because nobody really knows. One of the questions was what can fans and alums, uh, what role can they play in the future and direction of, of Blue Raider athletics? And, and that's pretty simple, whether we're – uh, yeah. Here or in the SEC or in the yeah. Pac-12, it, that, that role remains the same. It's a great question, and it's one that I'm really kind of eager to answer. And that number one is that, that we need fans to engage themselves and to, to to really take the passion level up to another notch. Uh, I think that if you buy two season tickets, we need you to buy four. If you buy four, I'd like you to buy six. You know, and so forth. That I, I think it's really important to keep our product growing. That uh, fans do, and our fans do a great job, Chip. That uh, we, we, our BRAA donations are up. Our BRAA drives up. That uh, we've we've led the Sun Belt in attendance many years in football. 
look what happened with our basketball at the end of the year and how the, the crowds came to the Murphy Center. So our fans are doing a great job. And that's some of the feedback that I wanted to give is, in a lot of ways, we need to keep doing just what we've been doing. But maybe we could do it a little bit better, maybe a little bit more passionately. But we're on a great path, and we need to keep doing that. And let's buy tickets. Let's support our teams. Uh, let's, let's talk positively about us and our accomplishments. We've been to three bowl games in six years, which is an incredible feat. A lot of schools mm -hmm. uh, don't have that sort of bowl history. Let's talk about our 27-win basketball season and beating Tennessee on their home court in the NIT. And, and uh, I think it's a remarkable accomplishment that we went to the quarterfinals of the NIT. And, and I'm very proud of that, and I hope our fans are too. So we've got a lot to brag on. We've got a lot to build on. And I can't wait. I, I think we all have our own roles in this. Uh, and, and I would just ask the fans that, to, to really do their part and, and, and support us and, and, and buy tickets and come to our stadiums and, and cheer on the Blue Raiders. Speaking of support. Uh, one question uh, asked about improving facilities. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about the vision for facility upgrades. Yeah. Uh, again, those two kind of questions dovetail each other. They do. More support uh, from a financial standpoint will help move these facility yeah. upgrades along quicker. And I want to be very clear here that these are on the docket. No matter know, what. Yeah, they're, they're on, and that's stuff that we should be doing. The, the, you know, and, and unfortunately, this is under the context of Acts the AD, and it's about the conference realignment. But this is what we're planning do, on doing anyhow, and this is what we need to do, is we need to pay attention to our facilities. And uh, we're looking at uh, some Murphy Center upgrades with a new sound system. Uh, we're looking at uh, putting, uh, like, video, video boards over the vomitories where the old scoreboards are, and and those are some substantial investments and in to upgrade to Murphy Center. It's a, I love the Murphy Center and it's historic and it's, it's great. It's 40 years old. It's got a little, it needs a little bit of love, a little bit of attention, and uh, we can make it even better. Uh, football wise, I would still love to, to have that multi purpose mm -hmm. practice facility. I think that's critical for our program's growth and that it frees up space in the Murphy Center to help all of our sports. So, that facility alone will, would, would impact all of our sports, make us better. Uh, we want to compete nationally. Uh, we want to be uh, nationally players, and the Sunbelt Conference gives us a chance to do that. That It gives us the platforms that we've gone to bowl games, we've gone to the New Orleans Bowl, we've gone to the GoDaddy Bowl because of our, our association with the Sunbelt Conference. Last year's NIT, and we may have gotten an at-large bid into the NIT with our record, but I'm not sure. But we got in as an automatic qualifier because we won the regular season. And then we have one of our great wins in basketball history uh, because of that. So right, our conference provides us great platforms for national success. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to take better advantage of that and to get better. And one of the ways you get better is through more support, selling more tickets, improving your facilities, uh, we need to do a great job administratively. We need to analyze things from top all the way down to say, how can we get better? And, and we need to do that. And, and I know that it's going to sound like, well, he's just saying that because of the conference uh, realignment specter out there all summer long. No, we need to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, we need to, to, to take some steps athletically here and to, to improve our program. And, and I'm excited about our future. I think we're going to do it. And when we do, uh, everyone will see the improvement. Yeah, and uh, those things are already in the works to some degree, at least the campaigns to raise uh, with, the, with the university capital campaign. Athletics has a major role in that. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad you mentioned the, the Centennial campaign because it is. It's a, it's a huge initiative. Uh, by uh, the university and Dr. McPhee and under the direction of Joe Bales and the advancement office and we are a big part of that with the with, with our capital campaign and our indoor football facility is embedded into that into that mm -hmm. campaign so uh, as with other facility improvements endowment opportunities uh, all of those kind of things to help us grow stronger so we are working hand in glove with uh, with administration this isn't just a 
uh, academic fundraising venture. It's not just an athletic fundraising uh, uh, vent venture. It is both. And we're working together and, and trying to, to move the whole university forward through a variety of initiatives. So I'm excited about it, Chip. I think that that, mm -hmm. that campaign is going to be it's going to be transformational for our university, and, and I can't wait to see the results. Yeah, and that's really no different than uh, than what Dr. McPhee's leadership has kind of led us in the direction of the, the total university experience anyway. That, that kind of fits yes. right in. And it was interesting. We flew in from Destin today and, and, and flew over the campus, and, you know, and you look out, and, and we all noted the, the new student union, what a beautiful building that is, and how it it looked from the air. That's the first time I'd really seen it from the air, and what an anchor that is on campus. And that whole end of campus is going to be transformed. And then two weeks ago, we broke ground on the science building, mm -hmm. which is the largest project in the, in the for higher ed in the state of Tennessee. And and so there's so many great things happening here. I, I can't think of a better momentum to get our capital campaign going than, than what's been happening on our campus. Well, there was a photo on uh, GoBlueRaiders.com, and there were two gentlemen with very big smiles on their face <laughs> holding on to the Boobas Cup. Who got to hold it on the way back on the plane today? Uh, oh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually in a box. And I'm embarrassed to tell you this, Chip, that I got it, and it's, it's not tied to the stand. And last night I got it, and I was excited. And somebody bumped me, and I, I dropped it. And this boobus cup didn't break, so it's a good boobus cup. So, <laughs> so it held already one drop, and it, uh, we had our pictures taken with it. And you know what? I'm a little embarrassed sometimes to to to, to hold it because I didn't do as much as the student a the student athletes get the credit. They're the ones that, that really went out and earned it, and they're the ones that deserve the the credit and the glory and to to, to hold on to it because it's a collective accomplishment, and I. I th Hope our whole department takes tremendous pride in it, and I hope our fan base does too, because that's four years in a row where we've been recognized as the the best athletic department in the Sun Belt Conference, and I think that's a tremendous a accomplishment. That doesn't happen very often in many conferences at all. It really doesn't, mm -hmm. and I, I love our our approach that hey, let's try to be excellent in everything we do, yep. and it uh, and it's reflected in all of our sports and. And uh, it's 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 very interesting. All right. Well, good uh, good session here today, and uh, maybe a few more of these uh, over the summer. And, and folks, keep sending stuff in at askthead at goblueraiders com. Right. Thanks. And those were great questions, and we we got to all of them. So thank you, Chip, and thank you, fans, for submitting that. And and let's have a great summer. Let's have a great summer, and be with us here on goblueraiders TV.